Hello and welcome to Thursdays at Home, pairing art and food. On behalf of the students, staff, and volunteers of the IU Eskenazi Museum of Art, thank you for gathering around the virtual table with us this afternoon. In this episode, we're thrilled to talk with Chief Foodie and Spice Slanger, Candace Boyd Wiley, and you, the community. My name is Keaton, my pronouns are he, him. I'm a museum host and stu student studying arts management. With me to host the program are Laura Shepper, Public Experiences Manager, Kaylee Dance, Food and Lifestyle Instagrammer. Our goal this afternoon is to simply gather around the table virtually to connect with one another over food and art. Together, we'll explore a playful way to interpret art. No expertise needed. Grab your munchies or drink and get comfy. First, we wish to acknowledge and honor the indigenous communities native to this region and recognize that Indiana University Bloomington was built on indigenous homelands and resources. We recognize the Miami, Delaware, Potawatomi, and Shawnee people as past, present, and future caretakers of this land. This afternoon's program is being recorded. Here are a few tips for optimizing your experience today. There are several ways to adjust the size of images on your screen when you're looking at artwork or food. If you're connecting with from a PC or laptop at the top of your screen, look for view options. Click on view options to select settings that work best for you. The vertical bar between the slides and the speaker slides left and right to make the presentation slides or speaker bigger or smaller. For those connecting with the phone or iPad, you may be able to enlarge images by pinching the screen. We invite you to participate today in the conversation by typing into the chat, which is found in your Zoom toolbar, typically at the bottom of your screen. This chat will not be available in the recording. If you wish to be unmuted to speak with us during parts of the conversation, we invite you to use the raise hand feature in your toolbar. Now let's get started. I will turn it over to Kaylee and Laura and I'll remain available to support your experience. Thank you. Hello everybody, welcome and welcome back. Um, we're so excited to, to talk today with, with Candace Boyd Wiley. Um, I would like to welcome everyone to the table. Um, first, I'm Laura. My pronouns are she, um, her, hers. Um, with me is, is Kaylee. Um, Kaylee, would you like to introduce yourself and say hello? And then uh, we'll... Of course. Hello, everybody. So I'm Kaylee. My pronouns are also she, her. Um, I, like Keaton mentioned, am an Instagrammer. So a lot of my time is spent eating, reviewing and visiting local uh, businesses in the Bloomington area. Um, and I do tend to post a lot about the foods that I find or the businesses that are um, appearing in town on my Instagram. So feel free to follow me along on my food journey. Um, I'd also love to hear what you all are bringing to the table today. So whether that is a food or a drink or even a certain type of feeling, go ahead and toss that into the chat as we get to know Candice a little bit more. Candice, how are you doing today? I'm well, thank you guys so much for having me. My pronouns are also she, her. Um, so a little bit about me. I am from Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm a food creative. So I have food events, I have a food blog. I am active in the community here with several organizations and groups. And I also have a spice line. And just, we are thrilled and honored to be talking with you. Um, I know you are not a blogger, but an award-winning blogger. <laughs> um, I really enjoy your articles. Um, you introduced, like you talked about your site, you introduced this creative space. You've got the cooking school, the spice brand. Um, when I look at it, I see like a, we're collecting art at the, at the museum collects art. You're collecting recipes and more than and more than that, there's stories and information. There's so much to it. Um, you amaze me. I'll just say that. Um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to say thank you for spending your precious time with us this evening. Um, we're thrilled to be talking with you. I thank know, you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. I know you're passionate about um, not only the delicious food and the nutrition and the health, but also food access and then also getting people comfortable in the kitchen. We were just talking a moment ago, um, and I think there's a parallel to getting comfortable in the kitchen and also getting comfortable with art and and talking about it. So hopefully we're gonna intersect and, and, and do both tonight. Super excited. I know you're active in the community um, in a number of ways. Um, and I wanna just acknowledge that. I um, have a lot of respect you're, you're involved in, not only in your, your food and your space, but um, in terms of um, empowering women in, in, in the food scene in the Indianapolis. I want to give a shout out to Indy Women in Food that you work with. I know you're involved with organizations relating to food insecurity, 
and helping families to, to cook at home and food education, a number of things. So I want to set that on the table as we're um, getting started. Um, and I know Ken, Kaylee, also you were just inviting everybody to, um, to introduce themselves in the chat. I've been talking here and not kept up, but I want to say hello to everybody um, who's um, joining us. So let's just pause and catch up though and see who's with us around the table tonight. Yeah. Okay, great. So I want to say hi to uh, Shanika. Anika joining from, oh, from Georgia. Welcome. I'm glad. Glad you're joining us. Um, Carolyn from Fishers. Hello. Jake in Bloomington. Um, and Emma connecting also from IU Bloomington with her roommate. So welcome. Glad you're with us at the table tonight. Um, Abby from Bloomington. Hello. Sarah in Indianapolis, uh, Jake in Bloomington. We also have another Sarah in Bloomington. Welcome back to Sarah Ward. <laughs> Having a crunchy salad to start her dinner. Yay. Um, and, uh, who's a docent? Welcome back. Um, Delilah from Houston, Texas. Thanks for joining us. Um, hello to Suzanne in Bloomington, in Indianapolis. Tina, hello, and uh, Mark and Shar from Bloomington, and Sandy from Indianapolis. We've still got a few more coming. Tijuana in Indianapolis, hello, and thank you for, for being with us tonight. We appreciate that. So, what we'd like to do, um, so we'll continue to welcome people as they join us at the table. Um, I'd like to just take a moment and, and share a bit of this when we do each food, each episode. So welcome back to those who've been here, but if you've not done it before, it's really easy. I like to share this in case you want to do it at home or on your own. Um, for each pairing, basically we start with a visual menu um, in our work. And so in, in this case, um, I've invited featured guests, in this case, Candace, to choose an artwork. But if you're doing it on your own, you can choose your own artwork. Maybe it's a photo, maybe something at home. Maybe you go to a museum and have some fun. Choose your artwork, and that's your choosing a piece that um, would serve as inspiration. And close out a couple boxes here. Oops. Then at the heart of it, we use what we call a thinking routine um, with these three questions that, that we call see, think, and wonder. And this is um this is the thinking routine from our, our friends at Harvard Project Zero and um, their school of education. It's a set of just three questions that are powerful questions that help us. Um, think more deeply um, and talk about what we see. You can use these questions on your own um, or with others. So not just comparing, but sometimes people ask me, you know, what do I do when I go to a museum? I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do when I look at a piece of art. And, you know, there's, there's no wrong answer there. But if you wanted to, this could be a set of questions that you can um, that you can use when, when looking, looking and talking and thinking. So after we do that, then we're going to talk about what might, based on that conversation, what might pair with, with that particular artwork. So it could be a food, it could be a beverage. So let's start. Um, this is the particular artwork that Candace has selected. Let's just start by pausing for a quiet moment to let your eyes just really sink in and savor this piece for a moment. Just to take in the details. So the first thing that we're going to um, talk about is um, the question, what do you see? So we're not yet going to talk about thoughts and memories and questions. We're going to start by describing what we can see with as much vivid detail as we can. And we'll do that together. So um, I'm going to invite um, comments in the chat. And I'm going to invite also um, Candace and Kaylee just to start our conversation here. So, would either of you like to start first? I'll go first. <laughs> um, so I see warmth. I see beauty. I see a little bit of fear. But I also see flowing arms. I see comfort. I see solace. But then I also see this white space here. And it makes me wonder what made him put them both in white versus colored clothing. 
Um, I see the darkness of her hair. I see her bangs. That was one of the first things I noticed was her bangs. Oh, that's interesting. Can you tell me a little bit more, um, if, if possible, about what it is specifically that you see that makes you, um, you're seeing the warmth and the comfort, the number of the adjectives that you've described. Can yes. you point out vision, what it is that, that leads you to, to those words? So the when I'm looking at her holding his hand, I can't tell if she is lifting him up or if he is reaching more for her, but I see safety and I see in her eyes, she's looking down at him. And mm -hmm. if I were her, I'd say, I have you, I got you, you can hang on to me. That's, a, that's the first thing I thought of. Yeah, yeah I've got you. Is, I had um, very similar thoughts. So, you know, the first time seeing this, I immediately saw comfort. Um, I saw specifically their facial expressions and they both look relaxed and just comfortable in the situation. So I definitely agree. That's exactly what I saw as well. That's really helpful. So the facial expressions are cueing you into this, those feelings and the sensations. So Tina is noticing trust and pride um, and connection um, and uh, the hands and the arms are emphasized. I think I too had a similar question, like looking at the arms and the hands, just noticing that of like, is he reaching and is she, you know, is she lifting and things like that. Yeah. So what else, what else can we see here? If we look closer or look longer. We talked about her hair. There's a bit of blue pattern in the dress. Yeah, I noticed that and I wondered if that was like one of those house coats that mothers would wear when I was younger. <laughs> I, I, again, I, I saw that and I, I felt like she was comfortable in her own skin mm -hmm. to be able to wear something white in contrast and with a little bit of color. Um, yeah. I saw the strength of her arms. Mm -hmm. I saw her beautiful caramel colored skin. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the comfort. So our next question then is, um, oops. based on what we can see and what we're describing in there and based on just individual life experience, what kind of thoughts come to mind? And we've, you've thought, we've touched on that somewhat already with, thought, with comfort and connection a lot of the words are there other thoughts mind so the first thought that came to mind for me was home you know I immediately wanted to call my mom and just say hey what's up you know um, it really made me miss home and just kind of being you know a kid again being able to just like jump in her arms and just be little <laughs> I had a very similar thought um, come to my mind um, for me when I was looking at her and him. To me, the thoughts that came in my head were very much of, um, loving thoughts of my mother and memories and the feeling of, of being uplifted. I don't know if she's lifting him or, or not, but it was this sense of support for my mom and that sense of uplifting and her always being there. And even just that I can relate to like memories of just being younger like that. Um, so yeah, it's um, very much a warm and for me personally, a warm and fuzzy, cozy, <laughs> loving my mom feeling. <laughs> um, Absolutely. Um, I saw that as well. I'm a mother. So I thought about being able to lift my child up, to hold my child. Um, yeah. And I saw that this little boy knows that his mother is there for him and he can put his hands in her hands and he'll find solace there and that he also is looking up at her so there's some sort of I see reverence I feel reverence kind of in this moment with him and her yeah absolutely I saw that Tina had a comment on um, that it could it be a grandmother um you know could be um, absolutely, and it could be, you know, we don't know, and I don't know, maybe it's a rhetorical question, but um, female figure, um, you know, who's supportive to a child. Um, brought to mind from, from David, um, sorry, my glasses aren't needed to be adjusted, uh, to David, um, 
thoughts and experience. Um, I would be curious to, to know, to, to, to hear your expansion on that. Um, thoughts of trust, innocence, and um, maternal love. I'm seeing notes on support and love. Thoughts of the black woman's experience, uh, the character on the left. So our next question is based on um, what we can see and based on the, the questions or curiosities that, uh, or based on um, the thoughts that came to mind, what questions, if any, um, come to mind? What are you curious about? Um, is there anything that looking at this particular um, artwork makes us you know, curious to know? I'm curious about the lives of the individuals depicting, um, what thoughts might have been in their head, what they were thinking, um, maybe if they remember the moment or not. Is anyone else curious about anything? So, Why is there white uh, space on the right? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Sandy had made a comment in the chat actually um, on our previous slide about noticing the perspective from what the artist painted. So noticing the child's perspective and for me, um, that kind of led to a question, you know, what are their thoughts right now? What's the situation? Are they at home? Are they playing outside? Um, you know, has it been, has the kid been at school all day and they just now get to see someone like from their family? Um, so I always, you know, I want to know about the situation. Absolutely. Was it a hard day at school? Did you go to school? Did you have a, a doctor's appointment today? Is it your birthday? What's going on in your home life? How do you feel? Do you just need a hug? Yeah. The questions Absolutely. I had. Yeah. And what was she saying something to him? What, what, what was the conversation? What was, right. what was spoken? Yeah. Well, if I may, I'd like to share. Um, oh, there's a few. I'm sorry. I'll just have a few more questions coming in. Um, let's see. Did he fail and is she helping him up? Who is the woman? How are they related? Those are good questions too. So I'd like to share a little bit about, um, about the artwork. Some of the questions we will let linger. Um, this is a painting by um, Darius Stewart, who is an American artist born in 1984. Um, it is called Study for Support. Um, it is a study, so an artist, um, they're studying, he's actually created a mural in Cleveland um, titled Support. So this is a study, it's a work in preparation for that mural. Um, it was created in 2018. It is painted with watercolor on paper. So it's, I know because we're virtual, it's hard to get a sense of the size. It's um, just over 10 inches, um, 10 and 1 16th by 8 and 7 8 inches. Um, it's a museum purchased with funds from the estate of Herman B. Wells. Um, the Joseph Granville and Anna Bernice Wells Memorial Fund. Um, and so then we have object number 20, 2019.54. Um, I'd like to share a little bit of information from, um, provided about the object from the curator, um, Nanette Brewer, who is the Lucien M. Globinger Curator of Works on Paper. Um, here's what she has written. Simultaneously personal and political, Darius Stewart's work invites conversation on contemporary social issues while meditating on his own childhood. He grew up in an impoverished, crime-ridden neighborhood in Cleveland, but with his mother's encouragement, pursued art education and received his MFA at the University of Delaware. People from his family and community often appear in his watercolors and urban wall murals, such as this study for support. This is the first work by Stewart in our collection. Using his wife and son as surrogates for his mother and, his, and himself as a young boy, Stewart explores how women can lift up the children's, their children's lives and offers a positive message for the entire community. So based on what we have, oh, and I wanted to share, this is an image the curator shared um, of the, the, the finished mural in Cleveland. It is at um, Buner's Office Supply Company um, on Detroit Avenue in Cleveland. So I thought it might be interesting to compare his earlier study in the watercolor with the, the, um, the mural. And I, I do wonder, I don't know the answer, but with the white, the white space off the side, I wonder if it, 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 the, the, the space on the building, if he was leaving space in his, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not 
space in his mind for, for how it might situate in the context of the building. Um, so I wanted to, oh, and I, sorry, I jumped ahead. I wanted to ask what kind of um, ideas we might have, I just got a peek at my own pairing, for, for pairing with this artwork. Uh, if there's anybody at the, gathered around the table tonight who might want to share ideas for, based on the conversation we're having, um, what we might want to pair with this um, artwork. Milk and cookies, <laughs> that's a classic. So for me, while, if, while you're thinking about it, um, I thought of my, my own mom and uplifting feelings. And um, I have memories of, of being a young child, maybe the, the age of um, the young, uh, the young man in, the, in the picture here and mom's, um, teaching us how to make donuts at home. And she uses the, um, she buys a package of the, like the Pillsbury biscuits. And as a kid, she would let me uh, stick my finger in and like shape it. Like, you know, she'd say, twirl it around, Laura, and we would twirl it. And I actually would twist them into shapes of initials of each person in the family and make all kinds of shapes. Um, and she would cook them in the hot oil. And then my other job was to put the donut into a paper bag with the cinnamon and sugar and shake it up. Um, and that was like the dream job for a kid, <laughs> just to shake, 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 and feel um, really involved in the kitchen. <laughs> So uh, my pairing for this particular artwork um, brings really, really happy thoughts uh, to mind um, of my mom and um, yeah, cinnamon sugar donuts. Uh, I think there's a few ideas coming in. Um, Haley, would you like to help me keep up with that? Uh, we've got- Yeah, so it looks like a lot of people are mentioning comfort food. Um, so cornbread and chili or macaroni and cheese. Um, someone had mentioned uh, their mom's chicken and noodles, which absolutely can relate. Um, another person had made a comment of just general food that makes them think of safety. And I, you know, I have to agree because that's just what this art piece exudes is just safety. Sweet potato pie. Oh yeah. Cornbread, chili, greens, candied yams. Barb potatoes. <laughs> yeah, macaroni and cheese. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of cabbage and cornbread, a lot of good comfort food in here. You know, that is great. I love all these ideas. Cheese. It's interesting. Like with pairing art and food, there are no wrong answers. And so I love to see all the different interpretations of what it means to each, to each of us individually. So Kaylee, you're next up. Um, I'm going to pull up. Or, here we go. You're pairing for this particular artwork. Yeah, so um, after seeing this art piece, you know, I was reminded of home. I was reminded of being a kid and having um, my grandmother who raised me just in the kitchen and cooking all the time. So um, for those of you who don't know me, the reason that I started, you know, my love for food essentially was because of my grandmother. She makes everything that I know from scratch. So she's been such a big inspiration, especially when it comes to just learning about food and how things pair well together. Um, so yeah, my, you know, my inspiration was absolutely her um, and her recipes. So I made a country potato chowder, which is a family recipe. So unfortunately, I cannot share the recipe with you all today. Um, but what you also are seeing is just one of um, her most recent cards that she's written to me because with the pandemic, um, I haven't been able to come home as often as I'd like to. Um, so we've just been connecting through phone calls and cards and it's just really nice um, just to see her handwriting in a card. Thank you, Kaylee. Uh, and uh, Candice, you have pulled together a fabulous pairing for us. So let's start here. Yeah. So the first thing I thought of was comfort. And the comfort food is none other than a big bowl of collard greens, a recipe that my mother gave me. Um, I actually started out making this recipe as a young girl, picking the greens first. That was my first job in the kitchen, <laughs> picking the greens. So I had to pick them and, you know, that, that was just that was comfort and love and being in the kitchen, just like you, Kaylee, or my mother, my grandmother, my father, they all cook very well. And so when I saw this painting, I instantly thought collard greens. 
So this recipe will drop it in the chat for you all, but I did this one and I kind of made it my own twist. Um, it's one that my mother has made, but I said, let me find a way that I can make it my own. So that's the first recipe I shared was my sweet and tangy collard greens. I can't wait to try this one. I'm a fan of collard greens. And when I looked through your recipe, I thought I have got to try this. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> and uh, Keaton has just dropped that in the chat. Um, I also shout out, I saw that this is also included in the Black History Month virtual cookout um, list. And then you've got that full list on your site. So if people are curious on that one, um, yes. that's, good. that's really cool too. Lots of comfort food there. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. So, um, so you've given us not just one, but you've got three, um, three, uh, three foods tonight. So you're second here. And again, I was thinking comfort, but I also thought about reaching back to my roots and um, cornbread. Buttermilk cornbread was a staple in my house growing up. So I thought again, another way to honor being a mom and having an amazing mom was to make one of her recipes, which is a cornbread recipe that she has made my entire life. And again, just a way to honor her, I decided to put my own twist on it. So there is the recipe for that. I thought of a little boy probably sneaking little bits of pieces of cornbread just before dinner. <laughs> it's good and sweet. And yeah, that was just, again, comfort and love and thinking things that, you know, mom makes for you and stuff like that. Thank you so much. And we go. And then I have one more, which um, it's, it's vegan friendly. It's braised cabbage and Johnny cakes. And um, I shared this one because I felt looking at the mom and the son and who they are reaching back, so, so to speak, into history, into honoring our roots. And so maybe as she's lifting him up, she's passing something on to him. So this recipe is a staple. My great grandmother made this for us growing up. And when I think about, you know, just her life, this woman kind of reminded me of my great grandmother and how she would always lift as she walked and she would always hold us up and she would always support us and always give us love. So when I thought about safety and comfort and food, I thought what better than braised cabbage and Johnny cakes. That is beautiful. I just love the connection that you just made there. Love it, love it, love it. And I see you're getting some love in the chat too. <laughs> That's good. Thank you, take on the pieces. Thank you so much. Um, Candace, I want to just say a huge, enormous thank you as we put together a triple pairing with this, with this gorgeous artwork. <laughs> um, it, this is, a, for me, a feel-good episode. Like, just the comfort and the, the yeah, all the connections. I love the connection of, of passing on. Um, from one generation to the next. There's so much here, so much richness. Um, thank you for, for sharing this meaningful experience with us uh, and, and sharing a free program with the community. We greatly appreciate um, your involvement. Um, Absolutely. It was a joy to think about this and just think outside the box and think about, you know, the ways that we can connect food and art and how so they're on different spectrums of being creative, but essentially, you know, we're all connected. So there's always a way that we can connect back to each other. So thank you again for having me. It was truly a pleasure. Absolutely. It's a, it's a treat. Absolutely. A treat. Um, and Keaton, we will turn it back over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much for such a wonderful conversation. Um, we got some great recipes and some great stories as well. Um, Candace, on behalf of the student staff and volunteers of the Eskenazi Museum of Art, thank you for sharing this free program with our community. Um, thank you all for this meaningful collaboration that includes all of our attendees today. Um, we invite you to see this artwork in person, including more works by African American artists like this bronze figure um, by Elizabeth Catlett or works in the Arts of Asia collection. Uh, with seven galleries, there's lots to explore. The museum is open Thursdays, Fridays, and Sundays from noon to 5 p.m. and on Saturdays from noon to 7 p.m. Uh, we invite you all to join us for our next episode of Pairing Art and Food on March 6th when we'll present a special three-course pairing with featured guests who are involved in the Community Nutrition Program from Paoli, Indiana. Also upcoming, we invite you to our Visiting Artist Series featuring Anila Aga on March 6th and Ju Young Shin on April 1st. 
or treat yourself to a free self-care Sunday with us with art making, self-exploration, and programming to nurture yourself. God knows we all need it. Upcoming self-care Sundays include affirmation trading, card exchange on Valentine's weekend, a soul collage workshop, and a wellness retreat. Pairing out with food and everything in the Eskenazi Museum of Art is made possible by philanthropy. So if you've enjoyed today's program, please visit our website and make a donation. Even gifts of $5 make all the difference. Thank you so much. Before you go, how was your experience today? We appreciate your feedback to help make even better experiences. We invite you to share your feedback in a quick and easy survey as you exit this webinar. From all of us at the Eskenazi Museum of Art, take care and have a lovely evening and some good food. <laughs>